Okay, so you don't have to be a genius to figure out that this video is not photography based, it's not videography based, and it's not tech based. So it's not the normal video that I would do on this channel. As you can see, I'm not just holding this shoe up for no reason. This is the Nike Zoom Vaporfly 4% running shoe. It's a racing shoe. And in this video, I'm gonna be reviewing this for you guys. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel, or should I say welcome to the channel, because let's be honest, the audience I get for this video is not going to be the normal audience I would get, and that is because I'm not doing anything tech-based, camera-based, or anything like that. As I said, I'm reviewing the Nike Zoom Vaporfly 4% running shoe, and there's a good reason why. I'm a very, very keen runner. I run for the Liverpool Harriers, and I compete to a decent level, and I've just forked out £200 on this Nike racing shoe. And I've got a few points I need to say. If you do like this video at any point and find it useful, be sure to let me know by slapping a like on the video. Also comment down below any questions you may have on this shoe or let me know if you've actually got the shoe in the comments down below. Go and check out my social media accounts. There will be a link on screen right now and obviously down below in the description. And obviously if you're new around here, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and obviously more tech based videos. But let's just jump straight to it. Okay, so the format of this video is I'm basically going to give you some advantages, disadvantages, and then I'm going to give you a conclusion on whether I think this shoe is one that you guys should be purchasing, and I'm obviously going to give my own opinion on it. Now, I've briefly touched on this. I do run for the Liverpool Harriers. I compete to a decent level, and I bought this shoe in terms of it being a new racing shoe and obviously training shoe for faster training stuff on the track and on the road. And there's a few things that I found out about this shoe that I do feel like I should share with you. But let's just jump into the advantages. And the first advantage is how incredibly light this shoe is. Now, I'm literally moving it around like it's not in it. It's literally the best way to describe this shoe is if you have track spikes for the track season, feel them, pick them up, move them around. This shoe feels exactly the same as them. On the Nike website, it's listed as 184 grams, I believe, in a UK size 9. Now, this is a UK size 11, but it literally is the lightest shoe I will ever feel in my life. Racing shoes are obviously meant to be light, but they're usually around 230, 240 grams. Now, in terms of getting the lightweight of a track spike in a racing shoe for the road, that's absolutely incredible what Nike have done. And I feel like that is a huge advantage, especially when you want to be racing in this shoe. You don't want something weighing you down. You want something lightweight. You want something responsive. And this does exactly that. Now, the next advantage is this shoe actually has carbon fiber plates running the length of the bottom of the shoe, which basically means if I just demonstrate this, I'm putting every effort to try and bend this shoe and it literally will not move an inch. Okay, maybe there, but that's literally where I'm Point, and I'm literally putting all the pressure through one point, but if you just try and move the shoe as if your foot would be in it, it literally does move an inch, and that's incredible. The stiffness of this shoe is fantastic for what you need. If you're buying the shoe, you do not buy it for easy mileage. You buy it to race and you buy it to train hard in, and the last thing you want is your foot to be moving everywhere because of the lack of stiffness in the shoe. So the stiffness is incredible because it's obviously just going to allow you to move your foot you know, transition through each stride without any effort at all. And that's a huge advantage for this shoe. Now the next massive advantage for me, I actually noticed straight away the second I put this on when it got delivered to my house, is the comfort and the cushioning of this shoe. Now I've spoke about the lightweight and the cushioning, and you're probably thinking they're two things that just don't normally go together. Well, in this shoe, it's literally incredible. The fact that this is probably the comfiest shoe I own. I own loads of shoes and this, like bear in mind, I'm not even talking running shoes here, any type of shoe, this is probably the comfiest shoe I own. Quite a few people from my club actually got this the same day as me and we all wore it the same session and we were like, it literally feels like you're walking on clouds. It's that cushioned, it's that comfortable, it's absolutely insane and obviously if you're racing cards, you're racing maybe 5k, 10k up to a marathon, you don't want something that's uncomfortable on your feet, that's the last thing you want. So the comfort of this shoe is absolutely perfect for what you want from this shoe. Now the last advantage is something that's not really relevant because it's a running shoe. You don't need it to look nice, but I actually think this does look nice. Uh, I do like the colorway. There's obviously three colorways. This is the most recent one. I believe it's called the Bright Crimson or something like that. It's got crimson in there somewhere. And I believe they've got like an ice blue and then like a darker blue, dark gray kind of color. 
but I do feel like this shoe is the best of the three colorways, but there's a few features on this shoe that I particularly like. Okay, so the first feature is this thing here, which is obviously explaining that it's 4%, which I'll get onto in a minute. It's meant to basically make you 4% faster. And then another little feature that I like is obviously to do with the marathon. I don't run marathons, but it's obviously got the hour, minutes, and seconds. So that's that's a pretty nice feature on the shoe, and it just looks cool on foot. And especially if you're running this thing and there's people behind you, it just looks pretty decent when they see that on the back. Now they are the advantages, and if you've not been able to tell already, there's going to be quite a few disadvantages. I'm going to spoil it. I'm not the biggest fan of this shoe. Let's just get into the disadvantages of this shoe. And the first one I'm going to start off with is the one I've just mentioned there about the 4%. Now, you're probably wondering why haven't I explained what the 4% means. And this shoe is basically meant to make you 4% faster or 4% more, have a better running economy, 4% less tired. It's basically meant to improve your running performance by 4%. And I've trained in this shoe now. I've not raced in it, so obviously bear that in mind. But I have trained in this on the road, on the track, and on a light trail, so it wasn't too intense. It was perfectly fine to run in and I don't feel like in any of them terrains any of them surfaces I've found what this shoe's for now the road is what it's meant for but I probably felt the worst out of them three surfaces running on the road in this thing I do not feel like it gives you a four percent increase in anything the only thing I would actually say for this is that I felt a slight effect after the session my legs didn't feel as tired which is good but you kind of want the performance or the effect to happen when you're competing or when you're training rather than after the race. Like imagine you run a 5k in this shoe, you don't feel any effect during the race, but then after it, you're like, oh, I don't feel as bad. What use is that to you now? You're hardly going to absolutely smash your warm down, are you? You want this effect to happen during your training or during your race. And I just didn't feel like there was any type of improvement. The times were there. The times were consistent compared to the previous times I have run, but I just don't feel like it gave the 4% improvement that it states. Okay, the next disadvantage isn't too bad on my shoe, but you can still see that there is a bit of wear. I've probably run about 20 miles in this shoe, and this shoe is actually advertised by many people to actually only last about 100 miles, which is pretty poor considering that it's meant to be a marathon shoe. Well, that's what a lot of people run in this shoe, obviously marathons. And obviously a marathon's going to be a quarter of 100 miles, you know, it's 26.2 miles and you obviously need to wear these in before you actually do the marathon. So you're probably looking at doing 50 miles, including your race and then obviously wearing them in beforehand and you've already then done a half of the mileage that this shoe can do. The durability just really isn't good because you just start to see wear after the first run and a lot of people on the Nike website, if you actually go and check it out, They've actually returned this shoe within 30 miles because of how bad the durability is. And I just don't feel like it's acceptable for a shoe to be this hyped up to have such poor durability. And now moving on to the final disadvantage, but it's the main one and it links in with the two previous disadvantages is this shoe costs £200. Most running shoes cost less than £100. If you get some kind of discount, I run in Nike completely. All my running shoes are Nike. And they're probably the most I've spent is about £85 on maybe a Nike Pegasus. This is £200. And that's like, it. that's not negotiable. It doesn't get knocked down to 100 It's £200. For a racing shoe, £200. And it's not durable. It doesn't last very long before it starts to wear down. And you don't actually get the performance improvement that it states. I think that's completely unacceptable. And it's mainly to do with the durability. You cannot pay £200 for a running shoe that is only going to last you at most 100 miles. And that's pushing it to its limits. Most people say this wears out a lot sooner than that. And a lot of people actually return the shoe. So I think for £200, that is just, it's not acceptable in my opinion. Okay, so that's all the advantages and disadvantages. And the main question is, what do I conclude from this shoe? And I'm not going to lie to you. I don't feel like the shoe can be justified the price tag. So in terms of the £200 price tag, everything that's actually based in the shoe, all the science behind it, the lightweight, the carbon fiber plates, how comfortable it feels, all of the science in the shoe suggests that it's perfect for what it's advertised for, which is racing 5K to 26.2 miles and obviously fast training. But I just don't feel like the durability of this shoe 
can even come close to justifying £200 price tag because let's face it, if the durability is that poor and you use this shoe frequently, unless you're sponsored by Nike, you're going to have to buy the shoe numerous times a year, possibly up to five times a year. If the durability is as bad as it's suggested, that's a thousand pounds on this one racing shoe, which doesn't even include your other shoes for training. And in my opinion, I just don't feel like anyone can justify that. That is all for this video. If you have enjoyed the review of this Nike Zoom Vaporfly 4%, be sure to let me know by slapping a like on the video. Also comment down below any questions you have or if you've actually got this shoe or are thinking of getting it, be sure to let me know. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you are new around here. And obviously, check out some of the other videos. I know they're a lot different from this video, but there will be more running stuff coming in the future and obviously a lot more tech stuff because that is mainly what I focus on. But thank you all for watching. Until next time, goodbye.